Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Cam Connection that provides you with regulatory news in between CamCon conferences. A few more months until June when we can finally meet live again in London. There are so many regulatory reforms that the powerhouse program of CamCon Europe 2022 is packed with an overview of these dazzling developments. In this Cam Connection we already have two interesting topics. I discuss the safe and sustainable by design concept with Andy Ux of Cefic and I talk with James Dancy of DEFRA on the explorations to reshape UK reach. I asked James about the motives for the extension, the consultation process and the possible alternative registration models. So yeah, there's been a long-standing concern um, before you know, UK reaching came into force um, of the potential costs of, of registering for UK reach. Um, specifically, the issue is UK REACH registrants needing to access the full data packages um, underpinning their EU REACH registrations. Um, um, this is because you know, the data is owned by commercial consortia, um, so there's a, you know, there's a large potential that fees will be incurred in trying to access that data. Um, An industry estimates that this could cost up to you know, £1 billion in total. Um, although that, that fee, I should say, is obviously very dependent on industry behaviours on, on individual dossiers. Um, we had previously taken this into consideration and staggered the full registration deadlines across the tonnage bands um, to two, four and six years from the 31st of October 2021 in order to spread um, the potential costs. Um, however, UK industry groups wrote to um, the DEFRA Secretary of State in February 2021 asking um, you know, for a, a review of this policy and suggesting an option themselves. Um, we held some discussions uh, with industry last year which looked at some options. Um, these were constructive, um, albeit not conclusive. And in December last year um, we announced sort of formally in a response back to the industry letter um, that we wish to engage with industry and, and other stakeholders um, to explore where there are opportunities to reduce the need for industry to you know, replicate EU reach data uh, for the transitional registrations, but also by placing greater emphasis on understanding how chemicals are used in the GB context. So very much looking at, you know, what, what information can we have in the sort of GB context, which is, which is more valuable to our regulators, which perhaps we wouldn't necessarily get under the, under the current policy. Um, so as we look at um, this, this option, um, you know, we must make sure we, you know, we still intend to uphold the highest standards um, to safeguard public health and the environment. Um, and to ensure that companies who do put chemicals on the market understand and manage the risks that they, they might pose. Um, and this is something we'll be looking into in more detail this year, as I said, with engagement um, with, with stakeholders to, to look at look at what might, might be possible. Um, I suppose the, one of the key things to point alongside this is that um, we tend to um, extend um, the deadlines for providing the full registration data, um, probably at a minimum of, of two years, um, we need to do this um, in order to take account of the time to explore um, the new policy uh, and then allow time for businesses to comply um, if a policy change is, is eventually made. Um, and, a, and a more formal consultation will be held on that um, this year um, because we need to put in place new legislation to, to, make, to make those changes. On Monday, DEFRA and HSE will have an exhibition booth at the pre-conference day of ChemCon Europe 2022 in London. An excellent opportunity for companies to ask all kinds of questions and in an informal way participate in the consultation process of the refreshing UK REACH approaches. During our Monday workshop and seminars, much more on UK REACH, but also food contact regulations and cosmetics, both UK and global, all in our in-depth seminar on UK REACH and other UK regulations. But in this seminar, also a hidden gem, a presentation on Switzerland, providing practical experiences from another national chemicals legislation in the middle of EU legislation. Talking about practical, do not miss out on our free unique hands-on workshop on REACH registration IT tools for Europe, UK and Turkey. Much more on Monday. In the afternoon, we take a deep dive into the data-driven regulatory roadmap for industry. And for this seminar, we have invited speakers from industry, ECA, OECD and DG Environment. This seminar will provide many interesting ingredients and tools how industry can manage chemical regulatory risks. Tools that will be useful in the transition pathways towards a toxic-free Europe, as mentioned in the EU's Chemical Strategy for Sustainability. This strategy, together with the REACH and CLP revision, have a prominent place in the ChemCon Europe 2022 program. The strategy is also a vital key in the green transition of the chemical sector and its value chain. An important implementation and innovation aspect mentioned in this strategy is the safe and sustainable by design. 
I had the pleasure to discuss this concept with Anne Dierks, Director of Sustainability at Cefic. Among others, I asked Anne to sketch in a nutshell the concept of safe and sustainable by design and explain how industry can boost the innovation for safe and sustainable chemicals. Designing for safe and sustainable products needs to consider the full life cycle of a chemical. It needs to consider its use, as it is often in the use phase that the contributions to sustainability objectives are realized. Think about um, chemicals and materials for batteries, photovoltaic cells, blades of windmill, insulation of buildings. And in the same vein, the use phase often determines the recyclability or the circularity potential. Of equal importance is to consider the processes used to produce chemicals and innovative technologies to produce them more sustainably. Take, for example, chemical recycling to close the carbon loop or carbon capture and utilization, helping to decrease the dependency of fossil raw materials. As said, safe and sustainable by design is an innovation approach. It starts at the design phase and safety and sustainability considerations need to be integrated from the ideation phase onwards. Circularity being an important one. A nice example is the recyclability of carpets by one of our members. By altering the production technology, it became possible to realize a monomaterial polyester carpet or a dual material version with a reversible adhesive, which makes the carpets fully recyclable and at the same time lower the energy use. Not only will it be important to think about the product at the design phase, but also about collaborations within the value chain and with the waste managers and recyclers. Circularity pushes ownership of molecules and materials into another dimension. Consumers are now storing the raw materials for future production. And we need to ensure that these raw materials make it back into the production chain. We believe that what we observe today is only the beginning. It's difficult to say where the challenges are. Perhaps the most important challenge is bringing the solution to the market which requires that our downstream users are also have to buy in into the safe and sustainable by design and circularity concept. Absolutely. Boosting innovation for safe and sustainable chemicals is an objective of the chemical strategy for sustainability. How can this be achieved? Well, luckily the chemical industry doesn't start from a blank page. So many of our member companies are already on this journey. In particular, we can build on the work done by pioneer companies under the umbrella of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development that led to a methodology and framework to assess the sustainability of the company's portfolio. Safety as well as sustainability considerations are part of this assessment and the assessment result can then be used to identify innovation needs. The European chemical industry was and is pleased to see the emphasis that the CSS has put on the innovating, on innovation towards safe and sustainable chemicals, materials and products. In particular, we welcome the efforts to put forward a methodology to define criteria and the definition of the criteria itself. And we see this as an important first step towards a common harmonized framework and harmonized approach which will help mainstreaming and accelerating sustainability innovations. We are looking forward to the second stakeholder workshop in this respect that the Commission is organizing on the second, uh, 22nd of March on the topic. Now we are also pleased to see the financial support through Horizon Europe, Cohesion Policy, LIFE Programme, other relevant EU funding and investment industries that was announced in the CSS. And one action which we like in particular is the establishment of a support network to promote cooperation and sharing of information across sectors and the value chain. And we will be part of that. We also need to find market incentives to make sure that safe and sustainable products bring value through the entire value chain and become the norm. We also need new collaborations ways with value chains and we need solid, comprehensive and harmonized criteria to standardize the approach. It's not only about sustainability, it's about competitive sustainability. We believe the EU should engage in a genuine foreign chemicals policy whereby safe and sustainable chemicals would become the EU's global trademark, allowing EU companies and SMEs to differentiate themselves. The longer videos of my talks with Anne and James are as always available on our YouTube channel. Please also follow us on LinkedIn to get the latest news on confirmed speakers for Chemcon Europe 2022 in London. 
Thank you for watching and looking forward to seeing you in June. For now, stay healthy and safe.